Let's open our Bibles to the book of Colossians, chapter 2, and tonight, verses 18 and 19. Just those two verses. Uh, class, may I read you the text? I trust you either have your Bible open in front of you or have access to the Word of God as we study. Verse 18 reads as follows. Let no man beguile you. Wow. In our last class, Paul advised the Colossian Christians. No, he commanded the Colossian Christians, let no man judge you. Now, along the same line, I think, let no man beguile you of your reward. Beguile you of your reward is one word, one verb in Greek. We shall study it. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a, listen to this term, it's unusual, it's unique, voluntary humility. I wonder what that means. In a voluntary humility, whoever's trying to beguile the Colossians, they've got this air, atmosphere, spirit about them of voluntary humility. Nothing wrong with humility. It's good. But that word voluntary, that's suspect. Oh, oh and something else. Look at verse 18. And worshiping of angels. Whoever this crowd is that's trying to judge the Colossians, beguile the Colossians, uh, they're really into angels. I, I mean, angels is a major focus of their religion, their theology. I guess I ought to say their philosophy. Uh, what do you mean, the worshiping of angels? We will discuss it a little later on in our class. Watch what they do intruding into those things which he hath not seen. The man that's trying to beguile you, intruding into those things which he hath not seen. The verb there for seen, I shouldn't be stopping, I ought to just be reading our verses. It has the idea of uh, visions. Visions. Um, vainly puffed up. Proud, arrogant, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Paul is using some very, very strong words in regard to these individuals. Vainly puffed up in their own minds, in their fleshly mind. They don't know how to think spiritually. They only know how to think in a fleshly sense, a sensual sense, a natural sense. Verse 19, one more thing about them, actually two more, and not holding the head, and not holding the head. That's why I put the little diagram here, and not holding the head. The head. Honestly, it looks like it's not level, but uh, according to my eyesight uh, here in the room, it is level. Nonetheless, not holding, just a stick figure, not holding the head. Now, class, we know enough about Paul's view of the Lord Jesus to already know, we've been told in Colossians, Jesus is the head of the church. He is the head of God's entire program. Not holding the head from which all the body, all the body, the trunk, the legs, the arms, the hands, from which the head, from which all the body by joints and bands, joints, and bands, the idea of ligaments, the idea of the nerve endings that run through 
the body uh, by joints and bands having nourishment ministered. I, I shouldn't be doing this. I'm reading my text. The body of Christ, which is the church, the body of Christ, which is the church, is nourished by the head. Is nourished from the head. It's true of our physical bodies. I could not move this arm. It would be impossible for me to move this arm were it not for the fact that uh, uh, my mind is sending nerve signals to my body, to my muscles, to move that arm. Mm. Having nourishment ministered and then the body, because of the head, knit together knit together. And if that body is being nourished by the head, if that body is holding on to the head, knit together, that body will increase with the increase of God. I can hardly read the verses, class, without talking about them and trying to explain them. I shall now read it, our text, without comment. Let no man beguile you. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility or in the worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen. He thinks he's seen them. He talks about seeing them. Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Something else about him. And not holding the head, Jesus from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increases with the increase of God. Wow. What two verses of Scripture. Um, Paul is combating an evil force. He's combating false teachers. And right there when he says, and they don't know the head, they don't know Jesus, they're not holding on to the head, Paul just can't help it. He breaks out into another discussion of the beauty, the glory, the power, the ability of our head, the Lord Jesus Christ. It is through Him we grow. It is through Him we are united, unified as a church. All that in good time. Let's do some vocabulary work, class. Let no man, no man, and it's an indefinite idea, no matter who he is, no matter what kind of religious degree he's got, no matter, uh, no matter his, his background, let nobody, nobody. Paul even once said to the Galatians, if it's an angel from heaven and he's not preaching the gospel, let him be condemned, let him be accursed. Let no man beguile you of your reward. Beguile you of your reward. Listen to this verb. Listen to this verb, if you will, please. It occurs here and here only in the entire New Testament. Kata brabuo. Kata brabuo. Let's, let's analyze kata brabuo. Kata intensifies the verb. Uh, kata is also a preposition that can mean down, upon, on top of, in that sense, technically down. And then uh, the little verb for brabuo, brabuo, it means uh, to umpire. To umpire, like, it, like in a baseball game. That's the one that says safe or out. Yes, you can stay on base. No, you have to go back to the dugout, the umpire. In other words, these people want to umpire your spiritual lives. They want to tell you if you're doing well. They want to tell you if you're a miserable failure. They want to tell you if you're saved. They want to tell you if you're not saved. They want to tell you if there's a reward waiting for you. And they want to tell you if there's not a reward waiting for you. Uh, I heard a preacher call them this, spiritual bosses, religious dictators. Oh no, we don't have dictators 
as true Christians. We don't have bosses. We have one head. Or oh, we've got pastors who are under shepherds of the flock, but there's one head to the church. Let no man beguile you of your reward. And you see, the judge, the umpire, Paul's thinking of games, athletic games, what we would now, I guess, refer to loosely as the Olympic Games. I'm not a f fan of the Olympic Games since they've been politicized. But uh, Paul's talking about the pure athletic prowess of it. It's the umpire who says, you ran the race, but you stepped out of line. You're disqualified. Oh, you, uh, you fought a good fight, uh, but, uh, uh, but, but you, you, you got out of the ring once. You, you are disqualified. You will not get your reward. These people, they're playing God. These people think they're the arbitra arbitrators of whether I'm doing good or bad, whether I'll get a reward. Honey, that's left up to the Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment seat based on how faithful I've served Him. My, my. Don't let anybody be God. And when Paul says, don't let it happen, don't let anybody beguile you, don't let anybody disqualify you. Don't let anybody rule you out. Uh, that means it's already going on. They're already trying to judge the Colossians in respect to days and in respect to weeks and months and in respect to what they can and cannot eat. We've studied that part already. Now, Paul wants to describe this crowd, these spiritual dictators. He said, number one, in a voluntary humility. In a voluntary humility. All right? I, I'm going to, in my country way, I'm going to define that term, voluntary humility. A false humility. A put-on humility. This will work. A hypocritical humility. They say, Oh, I'm so humble. Have I told you lately how humble I am? And by the way, if you've got to tell somebody how humble you are, you are not humble. A humble man doesn't even know he's humble. He's lowly. He's meek. He yields everything to the Lord Jesus. These in a voluntary humility. Now, God loves the humble. God hears the humble man. God will answer the prayers of the humble man, but not the, not the fake humble man. This is the crowd that says, oh, did I tell you? I fasted three days last week. Oh, did I tell you? <laughs> uh, we, 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 we did more than tithe last week. We actually gave 20% last week. Oh, did I tell you? I don't do this and this and this. I've got 75 things I don't do. And that means I'm a better Christian than you because I don't do that. <laughs> That's voluntary humility. Humility, but it's got to show off. Humility's got to brag a little bit. Oh, oh, look here. And worshiping of angels. Worshiping of angels. Whoever these enemies are trying to detract from Jesus, let me just go back and say this again. Jesus is the head. Jesus is the answer. In Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Hallelujah. But this crowd, uh, uh, no, they say it's not just Jesus worshiping of angels, worshiping of angels. We believe this crowd of uh, Jewish ascetic, as far as I'm concerned, apostate quasi Gnostics, G N O S T I C S. They believe God is so great. God is so big, I can never approach Him. I'll never know Him. I'll never go get to live where He lives, so i got to figure out a way to get there. Sounds like the Tower of Babel, doesn't it? And they come up with it. Somebody says, Jesus, Jesus, He's the way. Oh, no, no, we can't accept that. They tell us Jesus came in a human body. We believe anything in a human body is wicked. And God said, no, we can't, we can't accept Jesus. Ah, angels. We believe there are levels of angels. And if I can know this one and then learn about this one, every bit of it, uh, 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 just make believe, every bit of it, every bit of it, a uh, superstition. And they've got hundreds of levels or degrees of angels. 
and say, I'll know this angel, and then I'll know this angel. And when I finally get to the archangel, when I finally get to the highest angel, then I'll step out in heaven. Jesus won't have nothing to do with it. I will have enlightened my way, learned my way, earned my way into heaven, and God will just step aside and let me in. Wrong, wrong, wrong. If anybody's trying to go to heaven any other way than Jesus, I need an amen. They'll die in their sins and go straight to hell. Jesus is the only way. The only way, John 14, 6. Paul said, uh, they're trying to run your life. They're trying to tell you that the way I've taught you to live for God is wrong. They're saying, Paul's out. Our way is in. Grace is out. Works, works, that's in. They come to you trying to rob you. They come to you trying to beguile you of your reward. By the way, as Christians, if we're faithful, we will be rewarded. We will be rewarded. We will be rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ. The New Testament mentions crowns. Looks to me like they'll be meted out, given at the judgment seat of Christ. Only Christians are in attendance. The loss will be judged later at the great white throne judgment. And the Lord, the judge of us believers, He will give us to us, He will reward us according to the deeds. That's what Paul said. The deeds done in our body, whether it's bad or good, if I've been faithful, if I've been faithful, if I've been loyal, if I've been true to the Word of God, obedient to the Holy Spirit, worshipful of the Lord Jesus Christ, crown of glory, incorruptible crown, crown of righteousness, crown of rejoicing, the crown of life. Paul said, be careful. They want to rob you of your rewards. I don't believe you can lose your salvation. I believe Scripture teaches the permanence, the security of our salvation, but you can lose your rewards. I say, you can lose your rewards. Paul said, they'll rob you of your rewards. They'll, they'll, they'll keep you from getting the crown after you've run the race and fought the fight. <laughs> Uh, uh, then that volunteer humility, fake humbleness, piety dripping from their mouths, self-righteous, I'm a little better than you and let me tell you about how good I am. Worshiping of angels, way, way, way too much. Uh, angels are real. There are fallen angels who've rebelled against God and there are they are genuine angels who continue to be loyal to God. The word angelos, angel, means messenger. Aaron Runner. They're servants of the Lord. Thank God for them. But they're not to be worshipped. They're not to be uh, too highly esteemed. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus when it comes to our salvation and our, our, our worship. Book of Hebrews says the angels right now are falling down worshipping our Savior. <laughs> worshipping of angels. Worshipping angels on the way to heaven. That is one likely Interpretation. Let me go ahead and give you another one. Worshipping of angels. And that word for worshipping, it is used as religion. The book of Acts uses it once and it's translated religion. The religion of angels. Highly honoring and venerating angels. Here's the second idea. Hard to believe a Jew would end up worshipping angels. He would worship the one God mediated through the law, mediated through Moses, worshipping angels. Here is a secondary interpretation. Worshipping angels. We know from Revelation chapter 4, right now in heaven, there are angels, multitudes of angels worshipping our Lord. Glory and power and honor be to Him. They're saying, Holy Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. Uh, they're, saying, they're worshiping Him. And this crowd might be saying, we're going to live so good. We're going to learn so much. We're going to end up being so enlightened that we will be transported to glory and we'll worship with the angels' visions. We'll see the angels worshiping. We'll hear the angels singing. And, and we'll be invited to... It, it, it is the height of conceit Worshipping of angels or worshipping of or with angels. Intruding, intruding 
into those things, intruding into those things. The word there for intruding means to go again and again and again. What lexicon says it means to frequent, intruding into those things which he hath not seen. Now, now this is a it's going to be a hard concept to explain. Things which he hath not seen. And the verb there for seen, horao, H-O-R-A-O, gives us our word horizon, the panorama of things. These people are keen on visions. Oh, last night God gave me a vision. Gnostic literature is filled with reports of these visions. One vision after another after another, filled with reports of these frequent, frequent. God gave me two visions yesterday. God gave me another vision. And, and, and granted, granted, hear me, hear Brother Bagwell. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament too, uh, there are times that uh, visions are legitimate. Paul had a vision. Tells about it in 2 Corinthians. He said, uh, I know a man about 14 years ago, he was caught up to the third heaven and what he saw is so beautiful so it's, Ill, it's not lawful for him to tell about it. Oh, what a vision God gave me. They're legitimate visions. But not this kind. And the angel said, and the angel said, and the angel invited me to the next level and that no Jesus, 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 angel, 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 angel. God's not in that kind of... And they have them again and again and again. It's homemade religion. It's designer religion. It's religion and people are following it by the droves today. They'll take a little bit of this and a little bit of that. little Buddhism, a little bit of Hinduism, maybe a little bit of Islam, a little bit of, a, of the Baptist. And they'll mix it all together and come up with it doesn't work that way. You'll go to hell that way. Jesus He's the only way to get to heaven. They're intruding, frequenting, haunting again and again and again into things which they think they've seen it, but Paul said they haven't seen it. Uh, i got to say this. It'll take me a minute, but I've got to say it. I'm not interested in visions today. Honestly, don't know that I've had a vision in my entire Christian life. Well, Brother Bagwell, how do you hear from God? Am I, am I getting some amen somewhere? We live in the day of the completed Bible. I got an Old Testament and I got a New Testament. It's a library. I got 66 books that God has sent to me. That's where God speaks to me. That's where I view Almighty God. That's where I think God's thoughts after Him. They don't. No, the Bible won't do them. Jesus won't do them. Things they say they've seen. Visions they believe they've had. Paul said there's nothing to it. There's no real vainly puffed up by their vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Vainly puffed up, and that literally it does mean vainly puffed up, proud, conceited. It's the idea, I'm way up here, and the rest of y'all are so far behind me. I don't know, I don't know if you live a better than thou attitude. Isaiah called it a holier than thou attitude. Yeah, they are vainly puffed up by their fleshly mind. And the word mind is nous, N O U S, N O U S that facility, that faculty by which they think and they reason. And the word fleshly is spelled S-A-R-X in the flesh. In the, Paul said in Romans 12, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Y'all know the verse. Having your minds transformed. Having your minds transformed. And uh, that word transformed, you'll know it. Metamorphosis. Metamor when the little worm, the little caterpillar becomes a beautiful butterfly and takes to the heavens. Metamorphosis, the scientists call it. Let your mind go through metamorphosis. Quit thinking like the world. Quit thinking about angels. Uh, be transformed. Uh, become, instead of a worm, a butterfly. Think about Jesus. Think about heaven. Think about the Word of God. Think about the good Holy Ghost. 
Not them, their minds. Their minds are fleshly minds. What pleases them? What elevates them? Verse 19, I'll have to hurry. Verse 19. Here's the key. Here's the clincher to it all. And not holding the head. That, that verb, kratao, holding, it means that grab on to and not letting go. Now, I know Jesus is holding on to me. I know I'm in his hand, and I know no man can pluck me out of his hand. John 10 is clear on that. But I, he's not only holding on to me, and I make no apology for I'm holding on to him. Krateo, it is a verb that means with your strength, with your might, with your intellect, with your heart, with your mind, hold on to your Savior. Don't let the winds of doctrine blow him away, these false winds of doctrine. Uh, don't let the devil jar you and knock him away. Be steadfast. I am holding on to and But they're not. They are not. Ook, it's the strongest negative in the Greek language. They are not holding on to Jesus. You know what Paul just said? They are not saved. They are not saved. Or if they're saved, if they're saved, uh, they, have, they have backslidden, they have recanted, uh, they have apostatized, something is wrong. They are not presently holding on to the head. You can't get saved without meeting the head. You can't get saved apart from the Lord Jesus not holding the head. Oh, it's true. It's true in the Galatian churches. Uh, Peter was over there visiting. Uh, Barnabas was over there watching what God was miraculously uh, doing among the Gentiles. And, uh, and there's some folks that came from Jerusalem, legalists, this crowd. You got to obey the law. You got to worship on Sabbath. You got to, can I, well, you've got to be circumcised. That, that crowd. They came and Peter, he'd forgot all about the law. We're not under the law. And, and Peter was eating with the passport chops. Wait, can I have two or three more of those shrimp? Oh my, Peter's having a time. He, he's at liberty in Jesus. That crowd comes and Peter gets scared. He backs up. He quits eating with the Gentiles and he goes back to eating lamb chops and he goes back to eating kosher food and, and, uh, and Paul let him have it. Paul said, I was studying to the face. You're a Jew. You've been eating with the Gentiles and then this legalistic crowd shows up telling you, you and, and then you change. Pe Paul rebuked Peter. Paul, uh, Paul, Paul is the apostle of the grace of God to the Gentiles. They're not holding on to the head. They don't know Jesus. And, uh, and as soon as Paul says that, boom, he's off talking about Jesus. All the way through Colossians, when Paul mentions Jesus, it's over. Because for two or three more verses, it's going to be Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Jesus, 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 most beautiful. Most be he's my God and my Savior, altogether lovely. <laughs> Let's watch him. The head... The head, I may have moved it then, class, I'm sorry. The head, that's Jesus, from whom all the body, I'm in that body. If you're saved, you're in that body. From whom all the body, I may be a leg, you may be a hand, uh, I, 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 but from whom all the body, by joints and bands, I don't know how, that's the connectors. That's the nerve endings. That's the ligaments. Uh, that's the uh, nerve tissue. That, uh, uh, everything that hooks me to the head. Joints and bands. Paul's a physiologist here. Having nourishment minister. If I get nourished, it'll be from him. You see, here are his words. Here is his mind. Here is his way of life. And uh, him, my Savior, that's the living word. This is a written word of God. I will be nourished. And that word nourished to be made to grow. Uh, it, it, it carries the idea of, uh, of uh, oh boy, having nourishment ministered. Having nourishment ministered. I've got to give you that word and I only have a few seconds to do it. It, it, uh, it means every, it's the word they use for the husband-wife relationship. Every need supplied. Every need met. Every fear removed. Oh my, Jesus meets every need. Removes every fear. Uh, feeds me in every area of the, having nourishment ministered and knit together. We've got no business fussing and fighting and knit together increasing with the increase of God, growing with the growth, God get growing, 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 maturing, 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 climbing the ladder to the full statue of Jesus. What a text. 
What a text we've enjoyed tonight.